and welcome to my channel, The Orchid Hut. My name is Dana, and today's video is going to be a continuation of the video that I just posted a couple of days ago, where I created these cork bark mounts. So this was sort of like the prepping step that was in the previous video. So if you would like to know how I drilled the holes for this cork bark, how I made the hangers, and how I attached the sphagnum moss as well as the Spanish moss, then I will put a link to that video in the upper right hand corner of the screen and you can watch that video first. Um, today's video is going to continue from that one. I have the two orchids that I showed you in the previous video and these were the orchids that I had chosen to go uh, on these mounts and we're going to do that today and we're also going to do a little bit of a deep dive into the names on the orchid tags for these two. Now typically I don't get too hung up on orchid naming. It's constantly changing, being reclassified and you know just kind of hard to keep up with unless that's your thing. And so oftentimes, hobby growers will say, oh, well, these are Cattleya type orchids. And that's true, but um, if you look at tags of orchids, they can sometimes be a little bit complicated. And so the first thing that we're going to do is look at the tags for both of these and talk a little bit about how to maybe better understand how to read the tags. Okay, so we're going to start with this little orchid first. Um, this one was one of my Better Grow orchids that I um, had in an uh, unbagging video a few weeks ago. And this one, hopefully the camera will focus on that, it's LC period, so capital LC period. And in the orchid world that stands for Lelio Cattleya, Land Date, Charm, and then Spot is the variety. So the thing to know about this is that LC orchids have now been all reclassified into just Cattleyas. So the important part of the name is the land date charm and then variety spot. And if I look online, um, even just the regular land date charm orchid has a few spots, but this variety has even more spots on the petals and sepals. So that's that tag, and that's actually an easier tag to figure out. Now, the second orchid that I'm going to be mounting on the cork bark has a bit more of a complicated tag. And this one is Potanara Naomi's Delight crossed with SLC Catherine Clarkson SVO HCC dash AOS. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the first thing to notice about this is that this orchid doesn't really seem to have a name of its own because both parents are listed on here with just the cross information. Okay, so one of the parents was Potanara Naomi's Delight. And then the other parent was SLC Catherine Clarkson SVO HCC AOS. Okay, so let's break that down. Potanara have all been reclassified as Cattleyas. And mm, a lot of growers just sort of think of them as mini or medium sized Cattleyas. They have um, backgrounds of Lelia and Sophronitis, and they were years ago named Potanara orchids and now they're just Cattleyas. So the important name to remember is Naomi's Delight. And then SLC stands for Sophronitis, Lelia, and Cattleya. And so again SLC orchids are simply Cattleyas now. And so the important part of the name is Catherine Clarkson. And then SVO is um, Sunset Valley Orchids and Catherine Clarkson would have been one of their hybrids. And then the HCC, 
AOS. Well, AOS is American Orchid Society, but the HCC just means that um, it won an award, like um, a commended certificate. So Catherine Clarkson is an American Orchid Society award-winning orchid that received a lot of points in judging. So that's kind of how to read those tags. And, you know, it's, it's useful to know how to do that, but typically when we're just hobby growers, we're not always that concerned about the details of the tags. Okay, so we call these Cattleya type. All right, so let's start with the small one first. And you can see that I've already taken it out of the pot. This was a little orchid that had fallen out of the pot a couple of times, and in my last video, it almost jumped out of the pot on its own. So because it had been disturbed and the um, media at the top was a little bit sketchy, and sure enough, when I got the media out from around the roots, and I saved a little bit of it to show you, it had like little small bark chips inside the pot that you could see and I thought that those chips were a little bit small for a Cattleya type orchid but it was okay I thought alright at least it's potted in bark and some perlite but then when I actually pulled the orchid out of the pot stuffed under the crown of the plant like right in here was a wad of sphagnum moss that was really really damp and there's a point here that I guess I would sort of like to make about repotting orchids. You know, a lot of times what um, we try to teach beginners is that you don't necessarily want to unpot an orchid if you don't have to. You know, if it looks like it's okay and if it's not growing, then leave it be until you see some new growth starting and then that would be the time to repot it. Well, this is an exception to that because I was taking care of this as if it were planted in bark and drying out as if it were in bark. And, you know, then I find out that it's got this lump of sphagnum moss right underneath the crown that's staying too wet, but I could not see that unless I unpotted it. So once you get a little bit more, I guess, experience dealing with orchids, Sometimes you consciously break the rules or the general rules about when to, to repot something. And in this case, you know, it's a good thing that I did because um, all of these roots underneath where that sphagnum moss is are just dead. I mean, when that moss was wet, it just stayed far too wet for a Cattleya orchid. And, uh, and then it was in fine bark on top of that. So it's actually good that this was falling out of the pot because in a way, this probably means that it has an opportunity here to be in some better uh, media. Uh, is it gonna be set back? Maybe. Uh, was it probably already set back anyway? Well, you know, it's not the healthiest of specimens, so maybe some of that was going on anyway, um, but that's okay. It's a small orchid, I'm patient, um, by unpotting it, I still feel like I'm doing the right thing for it, even though it's not actively growing. But all of these roots that you can see here are dead. So, you know, having that down in that wet sphagnum or small bark, you know, these roots were just going to continue to deteriorate and cause the media that was in there to be very acidic and that's not good for the orchid either and there's a lot here that's just papery and there are only you know just a few slight roots that are still in good shape. The ones that I'm not cutting off all the way have a little bit of substance closer to the plant and so the hope there is that 
they will branch on. Okay, so if we look at the structure of this plant, it was a seedling here with these first two or three very small leaves. And the root system underneath that part of the plant is pretty much dead at this point. A bit of that is normal uh, because the root system dies under the older part of the plant first. Um, that leaf is probably not helping the plant anymore. I will leave these other two because they are green. They're still connected pretty well. They do help the plant with photosynthesis. And then the plant grew on and it had its tiniest little um, pseudobulb right here and then this one and then the latest growth was taller but the thing that I'm noticing down here at the base is where this eye for the next new growth might have been it either hasn't developed at all yet or it tried to develop and it aborted so you know not sure exactly what's going to happen with the next new growth on this one but it should be coming from somewhere in this area so because the new growth should be um, continuing along the rhizome near where the latest largest growth was in the past we want to make certain that this part of the plant is closest to the mount so that when those new roots sprout they have an opportunity to attach to the bark. Okay, so what we're going to do here is now that I have this trimmed up I am going to give it a quick spray with hydrogen peroxide because the, the media that it came out of was a little bit sketchy. Okay, so it looks like something like this might work well. Okay, so the part of the plant that would have new roots next are closest to the bark, and now what we need to do is work some extra sphagnum moss around these other roots as well as maybe hang a little bit more of the Spanish moss to help maintain that moisture. Okay, so this moss is a little bit damp and it does happen to be long strand moss simply because that's what I have but um, that's not all that important as long as you feel like you can get it around and attached to the roots. I'm not really attached to the roots, but at least kind of like wrapped around them in a way that helps deliver and maintain some moisture. Okay. Maybe another piece right here. Now in the summertime, I kind of fully expect to have to spray this probably every other day, maybe once in a while every day. Okay. And let's get a little bit more of this moss hanging on there. And, you know, again, this is one way to do an orchid on a mount. Um, I think every grower sort of has to find their way with this and experiment with what works and what doesn't. And bottom line is, is you'll be able to tell in a year or maybe two if the orchid is 
satisfied with you know what it what it has to grow on because it will either really take off or it will show signs of distress okay so now the next part of this is to get the orchid and that last bit of moss attached to the cork and I do this a bit differently and the reason is because I think things like fishing line and thin wire actually can cut into the tissue of the orchid and cause problems so I don't use either I don't use fishing line and I don't use thin wire and sometimes especially for small orchids like this a heavier wire that even has plastic coating on it mm, may be a little bit uh, too much for such a small orchid. So what I use instead is some of this stretchy beading cord. And you can find this in hobby stores, sewing stores, where they have like a beading section because um, usually what it's used for is like making stretchy bracelets. And the one that I like to use is the 0.7 millimeter or 0.028 inch diameter stretch cord. If you get something that is thicker, you won't be able to put a knot in it as easy. And if you get something that's thinner, I find that when you go to try and tie it, sometimes it just snaps. So um, this is the one that I prefer to use, or at least the diameter of the stretchy cord that I prefer to use. Okay, so sometimes what you can do, if you can find um, the holes that you had drilled previously, you can run this through those same drilled holes, or you can just wrap it around. And I think in this case, what I'm going to do is just wrap it around the entire orchid because that's not that much more difficult than um, in fact it probably would be more difficult to try to find those holes at this point point. and you can see what I'm doing is I'm making sure that that stretchy cord is over that one pseudo bulb that I want to make sure is n nice and tight and secure against the mount and then the stretchy cord is also going over the next largest pseudo bulb there and it's okay if that front part of the plant that older part um, is not as tight because that's not where the new growth is going to come from so let me cut this and again cut yourself always a little bit of extra to work with because there's nothing worse than trying to tie a knot in this when you don't have enough and you might be thinking well, my goodness, this does not seem like this is going to be very sturdy and, you know, like, won't it disintegrate or, you know, um, just sort of fall apart, especially if the orchid is outside. And the answer to that is, amazingly, no. Um, if you get a square knot in this and pull it tight, this will last probably a good two or three years and by that time you're gonna know if the orchid is happy here and if it hasn't attached to the cork bark by then it probably needs a, a new and different home anyway so all right so now what I've done is I've just pulled the same piece of stretchy cord back around to the front and I'm going to put a knot there to help hold some of that moss that was on top of the roots. Okay, I'm going to pull it really tight with a square knot. Okay, and so it's virtually invisible. You can cut off the extra if it you know bothers you and once you you know have a look at it you can decide whether or not you want to you know add a little bit more moss or maybe you know you need like a second piece 
of the stretchy cord to hold a certain place down and that's fine if you decide to do that. Uh, this was long stranded moss so I think this loose part right here will probably be okay as it is but I'll keep an eye on it and just add a piece of stretchy cord if needed. But the orchid is, you know, very stable. It's There's, you know, nothing wobbly about it coming off of the mount and um, now it's just a matter of making sure that these moss pieces are attached and like for example like this piece it's long but what you can do is, is you can actually find that stretchy part and just tuck it under and that'll help hold it on Okay, so that's one and done. I'm going to pause the video and clean this up just a tiny bit, and then we will do orchid number two. Okay, so we are ready to unpot and have a look at the second orchid. And this one is very attached to its pot. It looks like it's been in here quite a while. Um, but again, it is in pretty small bark. And it does have a new root, so this is a good time to get it adjusted to a mount. Okay. So this one has a much, much healthier root system. I'm sure you can tell that already. So let me work out some of this smaller bark. Um, as I'm working with this, the thing though that I am a little bit surprised about is that I watered this orchid maybe four days ago and I would not expect this bark to still be so wet. Um, not in my environment and not how I know the bark in the rest of my orchids is. So let's see what's happening here. It is, it is very, very fine with some perlite mixed in, but those are seedling size bark chips, which is maybe what the orchid has been planted in since the very beginning. And then just like the previous Cattleya, there is this wad of moss around the base of the plant. So, this is going to take some work to get that moss out of there. It's probably the original moss and the original bark that the orchid was grown in. So it's time. It's time for a new home. So I do believe I'm going to have to go to the sink and get some water to help loosen this moss. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, go to the sink, see if I can work out some more of that moss around the bottom, and then I'll be back. Okay, so back from the sink uh, with this Cattleya type orchid and this is all of the moss that was underneath the crown of the plant. So once I pulled it all out um, there was a good you know wad of moss there. And now that I have been rinsing this orchid and noticing what an extensive root system it has um, along with a lot of new root growth um, associated with this latest new growth. 
I have decided that it is probably not in the best interest of this orchid to put it on the cork bark mount. I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned that this root system has been used to more moisture. This is a very large root system. If this were to have grown this way and had already been on the mount, it would have been adjusted to having all of these roots um, more out in the open. But I'm afraid now that um, this is such an extensive root system, I, I would have a, a really difficult time um, maintaining it um, anywhere close to what it's been used to. So, change of plans. And sometimes we have to do this as orchid growers. I'm going to be finding um, a pot for this orchid and I will be uh, potting it with my typical Cattleya bark which is um, chunkier than what it was previously potted in but I do think uh, that this orchid will be happier that way because of how its root system looked when it came out of the pot. Okay so sometimes these things happen but you know I have a wonderful little uh, cork mount ready to go the next time an orchid fits on here appropriately and you know so it goes all right so if you enjoyed this video or learned something new um, please click the like button and the subscribe button will be in the bottom right hand corner of the screen um, consider hitting the little bell the notifications button so that you know when I post something new and I'm also on Facebook and Instagram now so if you would like to join me there, that would be great. Uh, for those of you in the States, have uh, a happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you on the flip side of the holiday. Thanks so much for watching. Talk with you next time.